Good day everyone, we're happy to be back with the latest ASEAN news. With me, Vanessa. Indonesia's Muslims protest against France president. Thousands of angry Muslims gather outside the French embassy in Jakarta to decry the Islamophobia of French President Emmanuel Macron and call for a boycott on French products. Dressed in black and white prayer caps and face masks, protesters in the Indonesia capital carry banners with a devilish caricature of Macron's face, red with point ears carrying the words, Macron is the real terrorist, while demanding for him to withdraw his statement. The French president has enraged Muslims for describing Islam as a religion in crisis all over the world and for vehemently defending free speech that some have deemed blasphemous and inflammatory. Macron's remarks were made in response to two recent attacks in France. A knife-wielding Tunisian man yelling Allahu Akbar, God is greatest, beheaded a woman and killed two others in French city of Nice. Two weeks earlier, a French middle school teacher was beheaded by an 18-year-old who was apparently enraged that a cartoon prophet Muhammad has been shown in class. Chinese reports new local and import transmit COVID-19 cases. The National Health Commission says two new locally transmit COVID-19 cases are reports in northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. The commission says in its daily report, the Chinese mainland reports 15 new import cases, bringing the total number of imported cases to 3,460. No deaths are reported from the imported cases. Among all the import cases, 3,116 have been discharged from hospitals after recovery, while 342 remain hospitalized, with no severe cases. The new imported cases, four are reported in Shanghai, three each in Guangdong and Sichuan provinces, two each in Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region and Fujian province, and one in Shanxi province. A total of 81,061 patients discharged from hospitals after recovery and 4,634 people had died of the deadly virus. China's Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, Macau Special Administrative Region and Taiwan have reported 5,958 confirmed COVID-19 cases in total, with Hong Kong has discharged 5,109 patients, Macau 46 and Taiwan 521. There are 105 deaths reported in Hong Kong and another 7 in Taiwan. Thousands of Muslims protest against French President Emmanuel Macron in Indonesia. Thousands of people flocked to the streets around the French embassy in Indonesia's capital Jakarta, protesting against French President Emmanuel Macron's anti-Islam's remarks. That Macron's described Islam as a religion in crisis worldwide and vowed to issue a bill in December to strengthen a law that officially separated the church and state in France. In a written statement, FBI Chairman Ahmad Chabri Lubis said that the blasphemous caricatures of Prophet Muhammad was an insult to Muslims. Andrew Hanif and other protesters also calls for unity. I hope Macron is aware of his words. He cannot insult our Prophet Muhammad under the so-called freedom of speech. Ida Rahmawati also urges the leaders of other countries. The situation that Macron faces now is a lesson for governments and leaders of other countries for not insulting people's beliefs. Because as Muslims, we never insult other religions. The Indonesia leader at the State Palace in Jakarta says Indonesia strongly condemns the statement of the French president which insults Islam, which has hurt the feelings of Muslims around the world that can divide the unity of the world's religious believers at a time when the world needs unity to face the COVID-19 pandemic. The rally, organized by the Islamic Defenders Front, FPI, are attended by people from Jakarta, Bogor, Depok, Tangerang, and Bekasi. Experts say China pay attention to SciTech development. Some experts say China will attach greater importance to SciTech development and innovation as the proposals adopted to formulate the 14th five year plan indicate. A communique released at the conclusion of the fifth plenary session of the 19th Central Committee of the Communist Party of China calls for an innovation driven strategy. Jim Rogers, a renowned American investor, says, the conference made it clear that technology will be the key and so will be agriculture. As far as the conference is concerned, they made it very clear that technology is going to be an emphasis and I hope that they meant it when they said we're going to open up more and more and more, you know. But I should also point out that they also mentioned agriculture. <laughs> and I am very keen on Chinese agriculture and I was very pleased to see that they too, while they're emphasizing technology, they're not forgetting agriculture. Jeffrey Tosson, a professor at the Peking University Guanghu School of Management, said 
the importance of technology for China was underlined by recent events. We saw a much larger role for technology than I think we've seen in the previous five years' plans. It's always been there, but you know, it, it's hard to ignore the fact that the recent political issues, particularly with semiconductors with Huawei, has made that a much higher priority. And I, I sort of break it into two buckets. It, there's a, a very forward-looking piece, very aggressive, sort of let's go on offense, let's create the new international standards, uh, electric vehicles, 5G, 6G, all of that for what's coming. But then there was also almost what I would consider a defensive aspect of, look, we can't be dependent or at least overly dependent on certain aspects of the technology supply chain anymore. Mm. And there need to be alternative supply for things like semiconductors in particular. So there was sort of this um, innovation centerpiece this time, which I thought was particularly noticeable. Right? The five-year plan gets a lot of attention, uh, but there's, there's kind of a lot of countries that do this. Saudi Arabia has been doing five-year plans since mid-1970s. Uh, the planning is not as important as the ability to execute successfully. And I think that is kind of where China does stand out, because when it does set these plans, whether it's for building airports or railroads or whatever, it actually does happen. I mean, there are surprises along the way, but it's that ability to execute in the long term, which I, I find particular. He says China's ability to implement its plans really impresses him. At least 44 deaths by Cambodia's floats. According to reports by Cambodia's National Committee for Disaster Management, at least 44 people died in the country due to heavy flooding which has affected 19 provinces and the capital. Regarding heavy rains that started on 5th of October, which caused flash floods and landslides in Cambodia, so far floods water continue to flow on roads all over Cambodia. Local media report at least 44 people have died in flash floods and triggering evacuation and inundating infrastructures across the country and at least 240,000 hectares or 593,052 acres of farmland have been flooded, affecting of 245,000 people, including in the capital of Phnom Penh, where thousands have been evacuated. The footage shows that the floodwaters continue flows over in Cambodia since the heavy rain in early October. Prime Minister Hun Sen inaugurates a new construction in Cambodia. The Prime Minister of Cambodia, Hun Sen, attended the groundbreaking ceremony and the inauguration of the new bridge project in the town of Phnom Penh. The construction, which more than 24 and a half meters wide and 824 meters long, passes over the Tonle Basak River and connects the island of Koh Pich with the Konorea development area. The project is handled by the Overseas Cambodian Investment Corp, a local company, and its construction is expected to end in 2023 with an approximate cost of $38 million. The strong typhoon in Philippines killed 20 people. The Philippines Disaster Agency reports that death toll from the Typhoon Goni, the world's most powerful cyclone, increased to 20. Albay and Catanduanes provinces, located south of the capital Manila, take the brunt of Goni's gust of up to 310 km per hour or 190 miles per hour and account for all deaths. The Disaster Agency reports 16 casualties from the 18th storm to hit the Philippines. The strong typhoon occurred in October that damaged many things and killed more people in the Philippines. Protesters continue protests against new job law in Jakarta. Several thousands of students and workers protest in Indonesia's capital Jakarta against the President Joko Widodo's new flagship jobs law, the latest in the series of rallies opposing legislation that the government says is needed to attract investment. The protests join with labor groups mark one year since Jokowi was inaugurated for a second term in office. The footage shows that the police continue to secure the demonstrations that the demonstrators using the Indonesian flag against the government and continue to demand the cancellation of a new labor law. The flagship jobs legislation is a revision of more than 70 existing laws that was passed on October 5th is designed to remove long-standing impediments to doing business by cutting red tape, easing restrictions on foreign investment and boosting labor market competitiveness. The government says it will lead to widespread employment generation. Indonesia president condemns France, president on insulted Islam. Indonesian President Joko Widodo, who leads the world's largest Muslim-majority country, but warned the remarks by President Emmanuel Macron had insulted Islam and hurt the feelings of Muslims around the world. Indonesia mengecam keras terjadinya kekerasan yang terjadi di Paris 
Indonesia strongly condemned the attacks in Paris and Nice, which claimed a few lives. Secondly, Indonesia also strongly condemned the remarks of French president that had insulted Islam and hurt the feelings of Muslims around the world, which could divide people of different religious beliefs around the world at a time when the world needs to unite against COVID-19 pandemic. Freedom of speech that injures the noble purity and sacred values and symbol of religion is so wrong. It can't be justified and needs to stop. Linking religion to terrorist action is a massive mistake. Terrorism is a terrorism. Terrorists are terrorists. Terrorism has no connection to any religion. He added, however, the religion should be seen as unrelated to religion and that linking the two is a massive mistake. Indonesian conservative Islamic organizations calls for protest against France and for a boycott of French goods with an image of Macron as a red-eyed malicious snail. The French president launched a crackdown on Islamist separatism, calling Islam a religion in crisis all over the world, after years of France struggling with homegrown Islamist militancy and attacks. Thailand exhibits the best of the Southeast Asian cinema. Bangkok following the protocols due to the coronavirus pandemic, where the Bangkok ASEAN Film Festival 2020 will take place, where the festival itself will expose the most relevant of the Southeast Asian films. Director Nelson Yeo says the event also took place in the competition for the best short film of Southeast Asia, an award that won the Singapore representative Here Is Not There, which is discusses the life of immigrant youths in the city. They also award the Unseen River in Vietnam and the Philippines to calm the peak inside a short film that changed the devastation that caused by the Haiyan Typhoon, known in the Philippines as Yolanda. Films from Vietnam, Laos, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Cambodia and Thailand shows up in a room qualified for the event promoted by the Ministry of Culture of Thailand and member country of ASEAN. The objective of the film festival is to promote the film industry in the region. And that's the news for today. Have a nice weekend. We will see you again.